Now in this video, I'm going to discuss on two different kinds of VLANs, extended and voice VLAN. So let's get started with some extended VLAN first. Now extended VLAN, as you know, uh, we have we have something called VLANs concept and the VLAN one is the default VLAN and we can create the VLANs from 2 to 1, 0, 0, 1, right? So that these are all, we call them as Ethernet VLANs, which we can use for Ethernet based networks. Now we still have some VLANs from 1002 to 10005 which are used for FTDI token ring networks and the default limitation of the VLANs is 1024 right and as per the ISL tag which is ISL VLAN ID it is going to be 10 bits. Now if you are using some 802.1Q tag or 802.1Q trunking so it has 12 bit VLAN ID which is going to support up to 4096 VLANs so which means we can use the VLANs, we can use the VLANs above 1025 and this range above 1025, we call them as extended VLAN range. And this extended VLAN range is supported on some of the specific platforms and we can use this extended VLAN, VLAN range for adding more VLANs into your network. So let us see some of the basic prerequisite for the VLAN, extended VLAN support. Now, as I said, most of the catalysts switches support this extended VLAN range under the following restrictions. Now the first restriction or the first condition is if you are using a VTP, a VTP cannot be used for this extended VLAN management. So which means VTP should be either configured as a transparent mode or it should be on the off mode. So which means this extended VLAN range will not be carried or will not, uh, will not work if you are using anything other than transparent or off modes. So VTP has to be configured in the off mode or the transparent mode. So I got one example here in the screenshot here. I have I have a VLAN uh, switch which is configured in the VTP server mode. So as I said, it works only on off or transparent. Once I made into a server mode, I tried to create a VLAN called VLAN 4000 with a name called Sales. Once I once I did that, you can see some message. It is saying that failed to create the VLAN 4000 because the extended VLAN is not allowed in the current VTP mode. So if you are if you are running a VTP now, the particular switch has to be configured either in the off mode or it can be on the transparent mode. So that's one of the condition for extended VLAN support on your switches. Now you can see these are the VLANs which I was discussing. From one is the default VLAN and these four VLANs are actually belonging to the FDDI or tokenic networks. So in case if I change the VTP mode to transparent mode, now you can see I'm able to create a VLAN 4000 without any problem, which is a part of the extended range. And you can see the 4000 VLANs sales and it is an active here. By, you can verify that by using a show VLAN command. Now the other condition for the extended VLAN support is your spanning tree extended system ID feature has to be enabled. And by default it is enabled, so we don't need to worry about this. Now extended feature ID means it's a combination of the priority value uh, plus the VLAN information, you know. So uh, when, when the spanning tree is going to select the root bridge, it is going to select the priority value and it's going to add the VLAN number and we call that as extended system ID. And by default that is enabled and we can verify that by using a command called show spanning tree summary. You'll see this message here, extended system ID is enabled and normally you cannot disable that see here you can see i tried one command with the, on the on the real switches with this no spanning tree extended system id to disable that it says you cannot disable it because it remains to be enabled due to the extended vlan existence okay so then i tried to remove that extended vlan because it is already present in my switch then even though you you remove that vlan it says that it's not accepted why? Because this platform uh, mandatory needs an extended ID feature remains to be enabled. Now these are the major prerequisites for the extended VLAN support. If you are running a VTP, the switch has to be configured either on off mode or on the transparent mode. And there should be an extended VLAN, extended system ID support. That's, that's one more condition for this extended VLAN range to support. And also uh, you may not, you may see some, this extended VLAN range is not supported in almost all, all of the platforms. The next thing we'll talk about voice VLANs. Now probably here we are not getting into any voice kind of configurations here. 
So what we'll try to understand is in case in your production network you have an IP phone which is connected which is going to send the voice signals all through the switch. Now for the IP phones we'll, we'll configure some separate VLAN called voice VLAN which is going to carry only your voice traffic. Now in this section we'll see uh, how to create a voice VLAN and how we can separate the traffic from, uh, from the data traffic, data VLAN to voice VLAN and how we are going to create those particular VLANs and what are the specific configurations we need to do. So we're not going to test any, any kind of voice VLAN configurations here. Now voice VLAN enables you to access ports to carry your IP voice traffic from an IP phone which is connected in the LAN. Now switch can connect to IP phone and can carry the IPv, IP voice traffic and normally the Cisco IP phone contains an integrated three port switch which it has a three port switch where you can use an IP phone which can be connected to the switch more like a normal access port and it has one more port which can be connected to your computer. Now and we can make this particular port which is connecting to uh, IP phone as well as data it can be a part of both the VLANs it can be a part of the voice VLAN as well as this particular port can be a part of your data VLAN which is allowing the traffic from the PC to go on the same port and also a part of the voice VLAN. So we'll see how we can make that particular specific configurations and what are the commands to create the voice VLAN and, and that's, that's something what we are going to verify here. Uh, there are some basic uh, points or the default VLAN configuration points will verify before we get into the command line like um, let me just come back to these points uh, later on let's first, first let us see the configuration on the voice VLAN now I'm going to use a normal you can you can try this command with the Cisco packet tracer program where you can have one dedicated port for an IP phone which is only connecting to an IP phone and this particular port belongs to only voice VLAN so this is my voice VLAN and then I can have a normal computer which is a part of a data VLAN so in this scenario I am going to create two different VLANs a VLAN 10 which will be uh, acting as my data VLAN where I am going to connect some computers and then I got a voice VLAN which is VLAN 50 uh, which is connecting to uh, normally your IP phones here so this is my VLAN 50 and this is my VLAN 10. Now both are different but I got one more port now you can also have a configuration where one port can be a part of both the VLANs VLAN 10 and VLAN 50. Now why because the reason is these two are different VLANs one is the data VLAN and the other one is your voice VLAN okay so I got uh, different kinds of configurations where you can make a one dedicated port to a dedicated data VLAN and one port can act as a dedicated voice VLAN and even you can make one single port to act uh, to be a part of both dedicated data as well as a voice VLAN. So the configuration wise there is a slight uh, change in the commands. So let us see here. So the first we are going to create the VLANs. So creating the VLANs is very simple. Just go to the VLAN number. I'm using a data as a name for the data VLAN and voice as a name for the voice VLANs. So VLAN 10, VLAN 50. So this is how we are creating the VLANs. Same like, uh, it's the same commands what we have learned. Now, first thing I'm going to configure this port number one, which is a part of a data VLAN. So in order to configure that, we have a simple commands, uh, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN, VLAN 10. And if you're configuring uh, voice VLAN, it's going to be the same. We need to say interface F0 by three, switch port mode access, switch port voice VLAN this is how we configure if you want to assign any specific port into a voice VLAN we need to give a command called switch port voice VLAN 50 here we did say access here we need to define as voice so that's how we we are going to uh, assign a specific port to a voice VLAN which is going to carry your voice traffic rather than carrying your data traffic now, as I said, there is one more port which can be a part of both data VLAN and the voice VLAN. So I'm going to configure the port number two, which is a part of a data VLAN and also it is a part of a voice VLAN. So which means it is going to carry your data traffic as well as voice traffic. Now, uh, troubleshoot, technically we are not going to test any, any this kind of environment here because you definitely need some extra configurations required on the router like DHCP or 
some some numbering has to be given to each and every phone here we are not getting into that particular configurations so that's something really not attested in your examinations so here uh, as a uh, normal routing switching engineer you need to have an idea of how to create a voice vlans so that is the main uh, intention of covering this particular topic in in in, in this syllabus here so this is how the configuration goes and coming back to some of the default vlan configuration uh, voice vlan is by default disabled we need to enable by using a command and what's the command switch port voice vlan vlan number and you should configure the voice vlan on on the switch port switch access ports and the voice vlan should be present and voice vlan means that vlan should be present and it should be active in order to communicate with the other voice vlans and then we can verify the same thing by using a show vlan command and by default uh, whichever the port you are going to configure as a voice vlan it automatically enables a port fast port feature port fast feature uh, probably port fast features i'll be getting into that more in detail in the in a separate sections so for verification we can use a command called show vlan so if you if you see show vlan you can see port number 2 it belongs to both a vlan 10 as well as vlan 50 because this particular port belonging to both the data vlan as well as it is going to carry your voice vlan traffic 